Hey, I'm all here. Uh, I'm gonna let everybody know how I'm, how I'm doing, how we're doing. Um, I'm having I'm having my moments. Um, mostly when everybody else goes to bed and it's quiet in here. Uh, that's when me and Doug would do most of our talking and uh, our dreaming about what we're going to do to the house and, uh, you know, about the future. That's what bothers me. Uh, but I am going to, everything that we talked about doing, I'm going to do my best to, to do those things. Um, he, you know, he lost his dad, uh, February 23rd to be three years. Uh, we have his ashes, and we had promised him that we would take him to New York and, uh, put him with his mom and dad, <clears throat> which be Doug's, uh, grand grandparents. So, me and the girls, we're gonna, we're gonna do our best. We're gonna take a trip to New York, hopefully this summer, uh, and we're gonna do that. Uh, he wanted a big deck, big porch put on the back, with, you know, it's covered. Um, it's easier for Cece to, my niece, to get out, you know, in the, in the summer. <clears throat> And, uh, and during the winter, if it's not really cold that day, you know, we'd go sit out back. Anyway, so we're going to try to do that. Uh, and I made a decision, the grass cutter, um, it's either the carburetor's got to be cleaned or it's got to have a new carburetor. So I'm going to go on YouTube and I'm going to watch everybody's videos. And I'm gonna learn how to do it, and then I'm gonna do a video, or I might go live and pull up a couple of guys on the live stream uh, to make sure I'm doing it right. <laughs> but uh, so yeah. But anyway, uh, the girls, uh, they have their moments. Lily had hers the other day. And then, um, uh, heavily, she's, um, she's dealing with it a little bit better. I'm going to show you what she made me. And she's 11 years old. And she drew this. Eleven years old. Okay. And on the back... She says, Dear Mama, I know that losing Papa was probably one of the hardest things you've went through. But just know that he is in no pain. And he loves you very much. So, yeah. Oh, uh, and then my sister-in-law, uh, her name's Connie. If y'all could pray for my brother and his daughters and granddaughters. I'm having one of them moments. Oh. Uh, She's been real sick. And, uh, it's after midnight here, so. Yesterday morning, the 27th, I get a phone call. Uh, they actually put her in Grandview Hospital Monday, or Sunday. 
and then they transported her to UAB in Birmingham yesterday or Monday and then uh, put her on life support well I get a phone call yesterday morning she had passed away on 27th one month to the day that Doug passed uh, and when I called Lily and Heavily in here and told them and Lily cried for a minute and then Heavily she cried she says why does everybody have to leave us I've tried to explain to them and I know they're you know they'll learn as they get older but I'm trying to help them cope with it uh, I've just told them that it tells you in the Bible that everybody is born to die uh, and our days are numbered uh, you know some people don't live that many days uh, some live longer uh, and I tried to explain to them that you know the way I told them I said well God needed another angel and uh and then Lily says, yeah, Mama, you said the angels was working overtime. Because <laughs> when Doug passed, um, I said, oh, Lord, I said, the angels are working overtime. Because your papa was up there. And uh, I said, they're trying to keep him off in mud mowers. So Lily said that that's why... He took Aunt Cunny, uh, cause he needed another angel to watch out for Papa, <laughs> make Papa behave. Oh, uh, but y'all, y'all pray for my brother and him, please. Uh, some of you I know has lost spouses, your best friend, you know, your true love, and some of you hadn't experienced that, but uh, it's rough. It really, it's really rough. Um, the other night I said on the video, you know, there's different, I was told years ago, there's different loves. Uh, one for your mom, one for your dad. Then you got a different love for your brother and sister. Uh, your cousins, your aunts and uncles. And then you got love for your spouse. Uh, and when you lose... You know, it was, uh, to me, it was a different pain when I lost my daddy than it was, it's a different pain when I lost my mom. I've done lost three brothers and a sister. You know, it's different. It's all about the same, but it's different in a way. And I hope some of you understand what I'm saying. Um... But when you lose your best friend of 20, 28 years and that you spent every day for that many years, uh, you love growing farm, it, it's a total different pain when you lose them. Uh, so... But that, I mean, we're, we're, it don't get easier, but we're learning to deal with it. Um, and I've, I've always, we've always, we put our Christmas tree up on Thanksgiving Day. And we don't take our Christmas tree down until after the New Year. I was just having a rough day yesterday. Or Monday, and uh, I just went in there and started taking Christmas ornaments off the tree, and then uh, yesterday we got up, went to town, all of us. We come back. I was just looking at that tree, and I said, "No, nope, that tree's got to come out of here. I'm not. I'm done. I'm. I can't deal with the tree no more this year." Uh, and I'm praying. That next year, I'll get to leave it up like we used to. 
but I just had to get rid of that Christmas tree this year. I just, I don't know. It's just too painful. Um, so we're we're dealing with it. Uh, now I promised to tell y'all a story about Doug. Uh, Doug would do stuff. Y'all know Doug. I think he done it just to aggravate me. Or just to hear me. Uh, call, his, call his all three names. <laughs> uh, we we had a place over in Lincoln. We was probably buried mm, nine, ten years. Well, we had a fenced in yard, a privacy fence. Had a little swimming pool, picnic table, the whole nine yards up there. And I was sitting up there spray painting something. And uh, my son had a switchblade knife. And Doug had one, but all Doug had to do to open his was just sling it with his hand. And uh, well, my, our son come out and he said, Dad, he said, mine will, mine will swing open or pop open like yours does. Doug says, well, go get me the WD-40. So Blake went and got it. He come out and he sprayed it. We kept opening it. You know, he'd pop it open. He'd close it. Pop it open. About that time, I turned around and said, Doug, don't do that with that knife standing behind me. I said, because um, the thing slips out of your hand. It cuts me. It don't hurt me bad enough. I'm going to hurt you. And <laughs> he got to laughing. So I picked up my spray paint can and I sprayed a little bit more and I set it down. About that time, I heard that knife pop open. I heard it hit the can. And I'm glad, I think I was blinking, but I'm glad it went like that. Because from here all the way on my right side was nothing but white paint. He had flipped that knife open, it slipped out of his hand, it hit the spray paint can, and it just, choo. Well, you see, my, you see my hair, right? It's got white spots in it, you know, from gray. But honey, when I said white, I mean from here, just all the way down. He was standing there laughing. I tried and looked at him. I called all of his names. And uh, he's standing there laughing. He told told her son, he said, Run, Blake, run. Run, Blake. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. So, <laughs> it took me two or, two or three weeks to get all the, the white paint out of my hair. Oh, uh, and then, oh, uh, the chair, the chair I was sitting in, it was uh, like a high back plastic chair. The whole right side of it was white. You could see my body imprint on the other side of the, the arm of the chair. So that was the the topic of, when everybody come over for a picnic or something or a barbecue. What happened to the chair? A lot of spray painting, Gail. So yeah, that was the topic. Oh, uh, and then, I mean, there's so many more. Oh, uh, he was always doing something. Oh, uh, uh, one more, I'll tell you one more. When we were dating, uh, well, we finally started dating. Oh, uh, he uh, had a old Ford truck pickup. And we was going to, I think, Aunt Janice's that night. And uh, we saw her go by, so he he kind of got off the edge of the road to do a U-turn to go catch her. And when he went off the road a little bit, his front right tire 
was off the pavement and it was it was pretty good size, you know, pretty good dip down. And oh, uh, well he punched it. And when he did, the motor mount broke. It come up and uh, the uh, radiator pan hit the hose, busted the hose. So we, his uncle Jim, uh, towed us back to the house. Well, he was working a lot of hours, and I wasn't driving concrete truck then. I was working a convenience store, and uh, so he was working a lot of hours, and he would he had already took the motor mount off, and had it the motor sitting up on a piece of a block of wood, a big old, a big old thick block of wood. Well, anyway, AutoZone had given him the wrong motor mount and the wrong radiator hose. So he asked me, he said, can you go get the new parts for me tomorrow? Swap them out. I said, yeah. So I went and got them and come back. And me and my daddy used to work on vehicles all the time. So, uh, I go up there and I put the motor mount in. I put the radiator hose on. And his Uncle Jim pulled up. He got off work and he said, what are you doing? I said, I fixed Doug's truck. I said, do you mind taking, uh, following me up to his job? Let me take his truck to you. He said, no, nah, come on. So we pull up and here comes Doug walking out. Oh, Uncle Jim, thank you for fixing the truck. Uncle Jim said, I didn't do it. He said, if you didn't do it, who did? He said, she did. He's pointing at me. And, uh. Hey, Doug, come running up. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, yes, you can work on vehicles. Yes, I'm going to marry you someday. I said, go and get out of here. So, for years, uh, that was the little inside joke between me and him, is that the only reason he married me is because I could work on vehicles. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And, uh the inside joke between me and him why he married me i mean why i married him was for his money and uh he looked at somebody and says well that's a lie but i ain't got no money well uh now the advice me and doug always made each other laugh no matter what we could be having a bad, one of us could be having a bad day. And the other one would come in there and do something goofy. Or say something goofy. Or make a goofy face. Just to cheer the other one up. And that's what a good marriage is all about. You want your spouse. You want to help them feel loved and take care of them and you want them to be happy and you know when they hurt you hurt when they're sad you're sad you know but you always want to try to lift them up and make them feel better and that's what me and Doug had in our relationship oh uh, and I think that's what's going to carry me through all this is remembering all the goofy things he done. Oh, uh, God love him. <laughs> but uh, well, y'all know how how big of a heart he's got. Never met no strangers. Oh, uh, you know, and do anything for anybody. Never judge anybody. Oh, uh, so yeah. But, uh, if y'all want to hear more stories, let me know. Uh, and put in the comments, you know, about what, what y'all do to make your loved ones laugh or, you know, I'd love to hear them. But, uh, I love y'all. Loves, hugs, and prayers. Love y'all. Or lie kisses. Bye bye.